everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to show you how to paint floor tile. This project was super fun. I've seen other people do this. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but this little spot in my studio, this fireplace floor made of dated tile was the perfect place for me to try tile painting. First off, I want to make sure you know that this is not my original idea. I've seen it done before by people like Remington Avenue and a few other people on blogs and Instagram. So I'm going to link to those below so that I want to give those ladies proper credit for what I'm about to try. So my studio has this little wood stove in the corner. The tile here is kind of pinky beige. It was cool in the early 2000s, but now it's not quite as up to date. So rather than ripping out everything and placing down a new tile, which would be not only expensive, but time consuming, I thought this was a great area to try tile painting. Another reason I wanted to do it here was because there's hardly any traffic here walking on this tile. I have seen people successfully paint floor tile in bathrooms and kitchens. Again, it's those same ladies that I was inspired by to do this. So make sure to check out the description box below to to have a look at their projects. Now without further ado, let me show you how I painted this floor tile. To begin, I prepped my tile with this orbital sander. This is a fantastic tool to have, make sanding really, really quick. And the goal is to make sure that your surface is nice and rough and it's going to pick that paint up. So I sanded all of my porcelain tile with this sander and then I used this crud cutter stain remover slash degreaser from Rust-Oleum and I cleaned all the tile. So prep is really, really important when you're painting tile. You want to get that surface nice and rough and squeaky clean so that it accepts the paint. Next, I took some painter's tape and I taped off everything around the tile that I didn't want painted. So for my tile here, it was this little trim piece, plus I taped all the way around the bottom of the baseboards. And this was an annoying task, but it definitely made my job a lot easier in the end. So here's how my little tile spot looks, all cleaned, sanded, and taped off. I am using this product called Chalked Paint by Rust-Oleum. I'm using the color Charcoal first. So this is a chalk style paint, which means that it has an additive in it or something that makes it really extra thick and extra sticky. That's why I chose to use this on these tiles because I knew that it would stick really well to my prepped tiles. If you're not using chalk paint, if you're using just a latex paint or something else, I would definitely recommend priming your tiles after you've sanded and cleaned them with an oil-based primer just to make sure that everything is nice and sticky. So far, my chalk style paint has really stuck nicely to the tiles, but you might want to do a test swatch on your certain type of tiles. I know that I've seen other people do just chalk paint like I have on a nice prepped tile, and I have seen some people take the extra step of doing the primer. That is kind of up to you and the tile situation you have. For me, I got these tiles rough enough that I was just able to use the chalk style paint right over top of the tile. So what I'm doing first is I'm taking that charcoal color chalk style paint and I'm using a small brush and I'm painting all the grout lines and all the edges of my tile. I have an interesting situation here because I'm painting around this wood stove. So some of this is going to be a little bit tricky, but I was able to manage around the legs of the stove. So once I was finished painting all the edges and grout lines with the charcoal paint, I used a small high density foam brush just like this and I started rolling on that chalk style charcoal paint onto all the tile. So for my tile, I was able to kind of go from the inside corner outwards. So when you're doing this, just kind of figure out what's going to work for you where you're not stepping all over the tile or having to kind of tiptoe over everything as you do it. I always like using foam brushes on painting finishing work because it leaves usually a really nice streak free finish and you don't have any brush lines. So after I did one coat of chalk style paint, I went over and did a second coat. It's going to really depend on the color of your tile and the color on, of your paint as to how many coats of paint you're going to need. So just use your own discretion. 
Now I am using these stencils from Cutting Edge Stencils. I'm going to leave a link to them in the description box below. They sent me these set stencils to try for free and I'm just taping them with painter's tape carefully down onto my painted tile. Now I waited a full day for my base coat to dry and I would definitely recommend doing that as well just to make sure that it's not going to lift off of your surface. That's a really important thing to do. Make sure everything is dried and cured before you do the next step. So I'm just putting only a small amount of paint on a high density foam roller. So I roll my brush into my chalk style paint and then I roll it again onto a paper towel to make sure there's only a thin layer of paint on my foam roller. And then I'm just gently rolling it over the stencil just like this. If you have too much paint on your roller, you're going to have bleed through through your stencil. So you want to make sure there's just a small amount of paint and you can do a couple of coats if needed. It's better to do a couple of coats of a small amount of paint than try to do one coat of too much paint on your roller. Then I took a more finer stencil brush and I just kind of padded the edges of my stencil here where it was really hard to roll. Um, some of these tiles were a little bit tricky because they were up against trim. And there's how my stenciled tile looks. So I'm just continuing to do this. I'm just doing every other tile for starters just so that they get a chance to dry before I do the ones in between. And just kind of systematically going and stenciling each tile like that. So here's an example of how I'm rolling my paint onto my foam roller. I just roll it into the paint and then onto a paper towel so that I have a nice thin coat of paint on my roller. Another thing that's really important when you're doing this is to make sure you're wearing some clean socks every time so you're not getting any lint or rubbing any paint off with your dirty shoes or your dirty feet. Again, you wanna systematically do this, so start from the corner and go outward. I left the trickiest tiles for last. Next, I took a very small art brush. This is actually one of my kids' little art brushes, and I went over any of the spots where my stencil didn't quite get the edges. So right up against the trim, I just kind of added some detail with the white chalk paint. And in the corners here was pretty much impossible to get stenciled properly, so I just hand painted those areas. So as you can see, here's how I'm going around the legs of the wood stove. I'm just stenciling what I can and just kind of bending the stencil as needed. And then after I pull off the stencil, I'm just going in with that craft brush and just hand painting any of the elements that I cannot paint with a stencil. This is time consuming and very detailed work, but I found it really fun. And then I went over with the charcoal chalked paint and I painted any spots where I accidentally dripped the white or I smudged the white. Doing a white and black pattern is definitely one of the trickier things to do, but I love the effect. So finally, once everything was really dry, I took this Varathane diamond wood sealant and I went with a foam brush and brushed over the entire thing. I've used Varathane for lots of different projects and I really like how it cures. I like how it wears, so I'm using it for this floor project as well. It's just a polyurethane water-based sealant and you can get it in all sorts of different sheens. So I'm just using a satin sheen here. Make sure that you're doing it over a fully dried painted floor and make sure that you do at least two coats, maybe even three, and let the coats dry really well in between to get that nice finish that you want that's going to last. Finally, I pulled the painter's tape off of the trim and here is my finished painted floor with stencils. I am so happy with how this turned out. It was not too hard, but incredibly time consuming, but the effect in the end was 100% worth it. So again, here's the tile before. And here's how it looks now. It looks like I retiled this whole corner, but all I did was paint it and seal it.
Thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you found this makeover interesting. This definitely took me longer than I thought, but the outcome was 100% worth it. Such a great look for hardly any money at all. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you think of this tile painting makeover and if you would ever try it in your own home. If you like DIY and decor ideas on a budget, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell if you want to be the first to hear of my latest videos. I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.